Hi guys, welcome back to another video. We have a 2016 Mazda 6 again. What am I going to show you? Just a right little fast snippet of it. We have an oil pump timing chain that has broken. I have done a video on one of these things before, but I was able to feed the chain up on the last one and roll it around. On this one, it's a different setup. Not a different setup, different situation. Engine is still running. May run off set of big embarrance, which you've seen me doing before. Don't need to show you that. What I do see I want to show you though is just in there, you can see a bit of the actual tensioner has broken. Okay, so a bit of that has broken. The plastic guide piece has falling off, fallen off of the uh, back of the guide here. And if you look in here, we have a bolt broken of some, some sort right in, in there. Okay, if that makes sense. And in there, there's something stuck in there as well. I'll fish it out in a minute and just let you see. But what today's video is going to be about is I'm going to do a timing chain here, full timing chain. So it's engine timing chain and the actual timing chain for the oil pump and balance shaft. So that's the, the task. What else am I gonna show you? Okay. Up here, we're doing a complete tear down here and here, injectors out, rocker cover off and any bits and pieces I need to make room here, I'm gonna be pulling off ECU and stuff to make a bit of room to get in and get this chime chain replaced, but that's what we're going at today. Let's go. Okay guys, here's our time and chain kit. There's our, it's that little guide that's broken. I'd suggest that it's one of the bolts off of that. Got lobbed and that little sleeve has got up front of it. There's the tensioner. Main engine time and chain. So that's the oil pump timing chain, a couple of pulleys and gears and stuff. Another, that's the, the main engine oil or timing chain tensioner. And there, the part of maybe, if you want it. Right, at this point in time, we have to make a choice or start tackling somewhere. And probably going to go in here. Could be a bad omen because the minute I pulled out a lock nut, it's in bits inside it before I even start. Not a good start, but I'm gonna need a hair there. It's up and running. We're gonna start pulling off bits of plastic in here, maybe crank pulley, all in our belt, get up, disconnect. I've disconnected the battery, disconnect uh, ECUs and start doing a little bit of a tear down here to see what I can see. And once I can get a bit of room to get in and get at this thing, at that point maybe I'll roll on up and I'll pull out my injectors, put out my injectors and my rock cover off and stuff like that. While I'm in there, I'll probably do a few checks, like check and see if that uh, turbo pressure pipe is blocked or any of that crack, because it does, it's a very common problem, but that's where we're going to be heading anyway, okay? On the reel first, make a bit of room here, and start stripping up here. That's, I'm just going to pull off this engine ECU, a little fast point, all I'm going to give you is I just run across these things with an angle grinder, so a little, uh, stainless steel disc and I'm going to just straight down through it with that and screw the button. Okay guys, I'm after pulling out the engine ECU. Here, unblock, unplugging. Sorry, a couple of bits and pieces. And then, oh, easy enough. My little bolts. Ah, you don't need to see them. Just a little slot in them, okay? Nice and handy. Um, and I've taken down, or at least pulled back my wing liner a bit. We're starting to get a bit more access now. Actually, relatively nice design where we have only nearly the chassis leg in our way, a bit of a wave here, right? But look, we should be able to get in at all this handy enough. I'm gonna keep on stripping. I don't wanna take off the engine mountain yet. I think I might go up the top. I'll take off the belt crank pulley here and then roll on up the top for my rocker cover and stuff up here. I'll keep on going. Okay, guys, a couple of steel injector pipes taken off. <coughs> Leak back pipes, put little caps on the fuel rail. I'm gonna start disconnecting some of the wiring loom just to kind of hang it out of the way. The loom actually hands over the rocker cover here, which can be a little bit awkward to feed in your rocker cover correctly. And all I'm doing is trying to make it hang out a little bit so I can bring my cover nearly straight up, okay? Um, this little, I actually don't know what the heck it is. Fuel junction, I don't know, box or whatever like it is, you can actually bleed the thing from here, but we have kind of a return pipe back from the high pressure pump and from the injectors to it. We have feed to the, I've got feed to the fuel rail. 
no, sorry, return from the fuel rail coming from the DRV. Fuel pressure sensor sitting over there. I'm going to get this thing just kind of maneuvered out of my way a bit. I don't think I'm going to take it off fully. And then start getting up injectors. Okay, guys, I have my injectors removed at this point in time. They weren't in there too tight. They come up nice and handy. So they weren't leaking. Um, I've also pulled out all the bolts out of the rocker cover. Made a little bit of room around the place for me to get up. My wiring loom is looser. Now they don't... I can't get it to go all the way out, over my, out of my way. Even though I've taken off a good bit of stuff out around the front. But I have height if I need it. So it'll, it'll come up. Now, the only other thing I'm going to point out here is this thing. It's exhaust pressure before the turbo, okay? And basically, if you take off that pipe there and try and pull the rubber hose off the sensor, you'll break the little leg off the base of the sensor. So what I'm saying to do is to pull off the clip lower down. So it just, it just sits in there. But pull off the clip lower down and pull the actual rubber hose up from the steel pipe that's the pipe actually that I've been talking about checking as well I'm going to stick a MITI back or something on that and just see if it's blocked only just for information for my own self I suppose I, I could have looked at live data but couldn't start couldn't run it so while I'm here and in here I'm going to check um, yeah just don't break that that's all ok we'll get the rocker cover off her and then continue stripping down this side over here. Okay. okay guys, a couple of bolts out of rock over, little wiggle, little woggle, and up she came and out. Um, loom just lifted up and I'm like, way. Pulled off, well I didn't, I pulled the bolt out of the crank pulley, ready to come off, and I supported my engine actually. Um, I supported my engine, I'll show that first, sorry. Right, I supported my engine just with a, an axle stand up as far as the drive shaft carrier bearing. So I could take off the engine mounting on the time and chain side. And I did. I unbolted my mountain out here. Bit of room starting to come. We're heading into our chain now. Okay, guys. Down here at the back. So if we're looking at the engine, just down there. There's a little kind of a maze of wires and brackets and stuff that's in the way. And it's a real, relatively big bracket. It's going from here all the way down to around there. There's one bolt from underneath, going in the same direction as the bolts for the time cover. Another one, a little bit higher up, you have to pop out that little bit of a wiring loom, which is that bit of a wiring loom to get in at it. There's another one supporting a water pipe back here. Or, sorry, another bolt holding a water pipe from that bracket that has come out. Anyway, we're gonna try and get that moved out of my way. Just disconnect any block connectors are in there and start pulling out them couple of bolts and it comes off relatively easy okay the only other thing I want to point out it's not great at this point in time and we didn't have any prior issues with well nothing that I knew about anyway that highlight can you see the lip in the exhaust camshaft trying to get something Trying to get something that actually goes more Okay, I'll give you an idea of the size of it. So there's a small pocket screw door. Can you see the where that's on it? It's pretty to be honest with you, pretty bad. In there, it's nearly they're dear, nearly a sin to be doing this and not doing that while I'm in this fair. Gonna have to contact the customer, I suppose, and see what he says. He's probably not gonna like that bit of information, but maybe it's a good thing to have it all fairly right. No real additional, we'll call it labor costs, but we could, we will incur. 400 euros or 500 euros worth of camshaft and possibly rockers. Maybe he doesn't want to know about it. If it's running okay prior, maybe he'll want me to ignore it. We're only chasing after our oil pressure. 
fault, which is the chain at the breaking, but not a nice one to have. Okay, a couple of bolts out of that thing. Still connected to the loom. That silly bracket, awkward bracket is on the back. Comes up, comes out. Have it disconnected off our oil pressure control solenoid and all that kind of stuff that's in here. Uh, another little bit of a cover. Nice or whatever it is, cover. Um, heat shield, whatever it may be, but it's into them last few bolts then. And I think we're, we're getting close to the cover coming off. Okay guys, we're back underneath. Doing under the wheel and stuff. I have um, all the bolts taken out of her. The little few bolts that were in behind that bracket and stuff. All that's holding the cover on now is a few dowels. You can see a little bit up within there, but I think it's time to get a little pry bar and start trying to lever this thing off. And see what damage that have been done in here. Fall now, maybe. Oh, don't fall. Oh, nice and easy. Okay. One cover off. No damage done to the cover, anyhow. Let me turn there for a minute. Let me have a little look. I wonder where this bit of a bolt come from. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So that, that guy, the chain broke. That guy got a bang of some sort. Took that bolt out of it. We drove it back that way. That should look nice and easy now. Time to start lobbing in a few bits. Oh, hey, come here. One of the things that I'm um, going to show is that joke, the old Woodruff key, as I call it, well, maybe it's dowel pin, whatever you want to call it, lock and pin, is get around 12 o'clock, okay? That's where we're going to be setting up all our time and bits and pieces in here at the 12 o'clock mark. And, sorry, I am woogling around. I did rotate her engine around. There's a little slot just there. That slot lines up with the surface, top surface of the actual head, okay? Now, that little indentation or mark is going to have a little brown or so piece what we call it timing chain link of a timing chain is going to mark kind of a gold or brown that's going to be sitting up against that keep that around 12 o'clock we're going to have another one of those little indentations on the pulleys below but it's time to get this stuff off of it uh, it's all fairly straightforward there's no fanciness to this timing crack now at this point we're not taking out I can't I made a couple of inquiries I can't get exhaust camshaft anyway lively we're a week maybe before Christmas and I don't think anyone wants this thing off the road for two or three weeks. I'm going to touch base with the owner, as I said there, anyway, but I didn't do it as of yet, but I can't get a camshaft fast. I like I don't like to be holding around. So I'll probably be reassembling everything, getting it all back together. At least some time and chain, all that kind of stuff. Look, yeah. Yeah, we're going to... We'll see. Maybe unless, unless one crops up anyway, fast and handy. But I'm going to start pulling off some of this stuff now, okay? Uh, I will go relatively basic I'll just put in to loosen that pulley camshaft pulley I'm probably only just going to put in like a and get a screwdriver in here and just I'm going to give you a sample I'm going to do just something like that to lever so I could turn the engine there which I'm not going to but what I'm saying is the, that's the amount of effort or force that I can put on that pulley and then that thing will go the nut will go anti-clockwise so I'm pushing against my screwdriver if that makes sense all the rest will fall off nice and easy and handy okay sorry okay guys I done exactly what I said I put in my screwdriver cracked it off she came two little size tens holding on 
Pinter or the eighth, so I don't know what they are. Um, that off, then the, the guide here fell off, and I've just pulled off my chain. Exact. Oh, it is. <laughs> I was going to show you where my chain was, but I nearly killed myself. Um, down here, the important bit that you're going to be probably looking at now is these little gears. My hand isn't wet. These little gears slide out, but that little woodruffy key thing that I'm talking about now, note the way you're taking off that gear, okay, and the size of it. So she's out. Number one. Can probably pull that little pin. There's that. Here it comes. That little gear. Again, note the way it came off, came off that way. I have changed these on numerous occasions and I have changed them. Sorry, I'm zoomed in a bit too far. I have changed them without changing the pulleys or the gear or whatever you want to call it. On this occasion, because we're in here, we're going to change it and we're going to change that one as well and we'll get all of our stuff. We'll just leave them situated up top, okay? They're all fairly straight forward kind of stuff and I'm gonna sit on my stuff just there okay just on a piece of cardboard for reference okay get in see why these bolts that are sheared and stuff and I'll get off that guide okay I'm taking out a couple of bolts out of the tensioner and the guide fun is gonna start in there it's the one that snapped hopefully it'll come out easy enough but I'll drill a little hole and see what happens and get that out and carry on from there okay guys another little handy little tip I'm gonna tell you, well I think it's a handy little tip anyway. Our bolt that was snapped is on the way out. Maybe all of you know about these, but anyway, the bolt is out and in hand, okay? And what I took it out with, if you can see that, can you see it? It's a backwards drill bit. So it, it cuts anti-clockwise. Get it? Which by going anti-clockwise, it actually dragged out that piece and only, we're going, that uh, focus. Uh, well, it didn't make much of a, yeah, that's not focusing on it at all. It, I actually don't have a hole drilled in it. It only just caught it and dragged it out. Have you seen it now? No, no just any anyway. handy little thing for you. Now, the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out a bit now. I've just been onto its, what have five? It's 532 or three. I've just been onto a chap called James in Cork Engine Center. Cork Engine Center had a camshaft and the rockers, there's eight rockers underneath this, but there's four of them that wear. The four ones that wear, they have in a kit, camshaft kit, they have it gone, right now I'm at the paying for it, it's gone out and going to be in a wagon by six o'clock and I'm gonna have it tomorrow morning from Cork, I'm based in Waterford. And that's the speed at which they are working. So big thumbs up to James in Cork Engine Center and fingers crossed, we're gonna have an exhaust camshaft here going in. I've also got an authorized off the owner prior to. Because there's no work involved in changing this now. I will have this camshaft changed relatively fast. These little, what will I call them? These little uh, pipes, blocks, so I'm gonna clean them. I'm not gonna disassemble any of my high pressure pump or anything over here. The camshaft will come out with that in situ and I have my chain and stuff off now. So we're gonna get this thing swapped over, okay? We probably would have had a small little leak starting here from the injectors, but right now anyway, the rest of them are fairly clean and we're putting in a new set of washers in there, so we're away in a hack, okay? Guys, yeah, I'm gonna reassemble another little bit and probably just cut in tomorrow morning. Talk to you in Okay guys, it's not the next morning yet, but I'm just gonna show you this while I'm putting it together, okay? Time and chain, this is the pulley off the crank shaft. So, our wood of key, Nah, bad job, eh? Our Woodruff key is at 12 o'clock, as we have been on along. We have two marks 
on the side of the gear we have a brass or copper or whatever maybe kind of colored link here so the two links mark up or line up with those two now this then is the oil pump and balance shaft pulley on that then side of it we have three links but then we have three marks one two three okay so again just as a fast visual both pins are at 12 o'clock here and here okay that's how that go together i'm only hanging this in i'm just giving you this i'm familiar with this but i'm just pointing it out for you so if anyone has any doubts 12 12 o'clock 12 o'clock three marks two marks okay okay guys still not gone home but anyway we're getting there I decided to put up my oil pump and balance shaft module. Oil related issues, which I thought it was going to be just a gauze to start with. And when I dropped the sump off, lo and behold, it's all the chain broken. But I've changed or renewed that anyway. And I've also put in a set of big end bearings up above. But I've done many and numerous video on them. So you scroll through my Mazda stuff and you're going to see me changing these things. The gauze is sitting there. Part number if you want. Set of big end bearings. Part number of bearings. What do I want to show? It's probably just wise that I did change the bearings. You can actually see that one pitted in there. Now it's the only one that's pitted, a bit burnt, but the rest of them seem to be, didn't clean them up too much, but they seem to be fairly okay. So yeah, anyway, that is the other hair there. The chain, I've stuck in some of my guides and stuff just to get them all some of the new bits and pieces off my tray or trolley and hanging on the car. Bolts in where the one sheared. Two bolts in the tension are in. A little, oop, our Woodruff key is at 12 o'clock. The opposite one down here is at 12 o'clock. You can see one, two, three marks in place. I know you're probably not going to see them. the opposite mark. No matter, ah, look if you want to, I'll pull off that. You can see, yeah, you can see the two marks here and it's not that they're not in line, it's just that my camera is not in line. Um, yeah, right, she's, she's coming back together. I'm gonna get in, I bolt in here and torque it. The crank is floating, there's no injectors in it, so there's no, no pressure on anything, it's rolling easy. So all I am going to do is what you've seen before is big nipex pliers to go in here and to hold the outside of the chain and torque that bolt, okay? Um, yeah, roll on. The minute that's torqued, I'm gone. I'm gone out of here, okay? If you want I'm to know, guys, me. before I get out of here, um, the only thing I have done in order to be able to lift the car up in the air was I got a pry bear and a bolt in here in the timing cover and just put a chain locked around it. So it's only going from the front panel up to just below the wipers. And that's enough support for my engine to... Uh, to bring me up. We have the other three engine mountains around the gearbox and stuff holding stuff in place, but that was just in case you're nosy. Okay. Okay guys, hung in my chain into place. I did it with two hands. Um everyone was relatively lined up up here. Pushed on my little pulley on the bottom as you see the Woodruff key is at twelve o'clock. Okay. Our Mark here is in line with the top of the head. Our little indentation and the gold link is in line. Our, you can see that? Little indentation and the gold link again is lined up. And as we said there, the Woodruff key is at 12 o'clock, if you can see it there. That's it. We are up. Uh, I put in the pictures for torque setting, so you'll get that reference when you're working. Um, I just used 24 spanner in here to hold the camshaft to torque this. That is now, at this point in time, torqued. I'm happy enough that my timing, as per se, at this point in time, is all as it should be. Little pin. Time for it to come out. Once you're Little indentation and your gold links are in the right place. Doesn't really matter whether you 
put it together, you know, five or ten degrees that way or that way or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's timed up. They're not giving you a specific point to line up at. Only the guide is 12 o'clock and that in line with the head. So if it's a little bit moved around now, it doesn't matter. I'm happy that everything is as it should be at this point in time, ready to be squeezed back together. I think it's time for getting a clean up, start getting a cover back on. Okay, guys, I have the cover sat on. There's going to be very little to show you and this is only the reverse of what we done on the disassembly. So I'll motor on and get it kind of slapped together and show you a bit maybe at the end. One or two little snippets that I think are important, but other than that, we will just carry on. Okay, guys, we're heading on the home run here now. We have... ECU and all the bits and pieces put back together in here. Any earth straps and stuff bolted back together. Our turbo pressure pipes, I verified that the pipe was clean and clear before assembling. Have our new injector rocker cover seals gone in there. I have our injectors sitting here in our timing belt box. Just for reference, you're not going to want this, but there is a part number for injector washers. I have two sets of them there. I'm only going to be using one. Um, that's it. Going to replace them. Get them back into place. Not even going to give you torque settings for the injectors because there's a debate going on in this that there's an up upgraded torque setting. So, but I have a video on this as well if you want to go back and reference to that as well. Uh, injector replacement. Okay, that's it. Going to get in them and get oil in it. And okay, guys, this is going to be the last little snippet before I leave injectors open or something and crank it over and build up oil pressure and stuff before it actually tries to fire. Last one was that fired up nearly straight away on me. If we're looking at the copper washers, starting to go, starting to get little burn marks in around the inner part of it. So the hole in the center has gone very big. You can see number two was starting to fail. Now I don't know which one is which here, but number two we had a little burn mark. I'd probably suggest is it this one? Because it's kind of very black around the edge. We don't see any clean edge seal around it and can actually there it is starting to blow there the upgraded version of the washer are kind of a copper and aluminium mix and that's what the upgraded version look like okay but we are stuck back together i said of another set that i have um yeah get a bit of either okay guys we are back together ends up running heart could be a little bit up in your mouth because you're cranking there there's no compression to start with because of the new hydraulic followers um, I'm just going to show you what we've replaced on this thing, okay? Here is our camshaft, oil strainer. There's our oil pump timing chain that broke. There's the main chain and gears. Here's the two gears from the oil pump chain tensioner and guide from the oil pump chain. That's the main tensioner from the main chain. There's a guide from the main chain. I'm missing the actual tensioner. I don't know, I can't find it. God knows where. Seals in the middle of the rock cover for around the injectors. Rockers for underneath the camshaft. Copper washers underneath the injectors. Big end bearings. Eight halves. Halves. Bolt that sheared or snapped in here. Little piece that got behind one of the oaks got a cham and broke. It didn't matter to us anyway. And then there's the link that actually snapped off of that chain in the first place. Or at least the other half of the piece that's in here. And that's the list of pieces. Oh, I've also done the rocker cover gasket as well. So there are the parts, it's up and running. And right now we're gonna cock up a few miles and just see where, where it ends up and how it drives the next while, okay? Okay guys, this is our maiden voyage on the way home there. I've the odometer zeroed again. I've four kilometers, 221, 130 or so on it, but she's gonna do a couple of miles and we'll clock in a bit later. Okay guys, it's not a massive amount, but I have 82 kilometers done on this thing. Um, she's flying them off. It's been over scrap yards and picking up parts and blah, blah, blah. First tip of the key, scan tool, thrown on seat, no faults in there. Scanned it before I done the last drive, it was about 30 kilometers or so. And I, had, I hadn't got any faults to start, but the man said he had no uh, lights on the dash, just that he lost oil pressure, which was the oil pump timing chain that broke. As we, as we know about it. And then the change in the camshaft is kind of a preventative maintenance rather than anything else. So look, for this one, timing chain being replaced on it, we're done. Hope there's some pointers in there for you that's gonna help you out some little bit. Um, Mazda 6, timing chain. See you in the next cartoon, boys. Talk to you soon.